there's no words to express the feeling of when you're looking out the back window at your mom, like, and you know that you're leaving her. I think if I would have felt wanted by any of the homes or by anybody in general, I think I would have been a lot less angry. And I just felt like I did not belong there at all because I knew that in my heart that I had a real family and that this is not where I'm supposed to be, but I felt like I had no way to express that and no one to express it to. A lot of these people are just using government money to get by, and that's how I look at it. I mean, I've been in quite a few homes where I was better off if I would have stayed at my mom's house. When I turned 18, I put everything I had in like a garbage bag, and I walked out the door. Had I had a proper like structure in place to age out with, I think I could have made it. Altogether, I was moved 27 times throughout some of the same placements multiple times. Probably about two dozen or more. I was in and out of mental hospitals, PRTFs, foster homes, group homes, and then I was on the run. At the time, I thought my mom didn't want us or, you know, that's what I was led to believe, that my mom wasn't able to take care of us. She did her best by me as she could. She didn't ever abuse me. She didn't ever neglect me. And if there was neglect, it was never intentional. I was having a lot of behavioral issues. My mom called and got help for me. Uh, she didn't know what to do. I was just too much for my mom with everything that was going on. Yeah, I was really rebellious. I mean, cutting, having sex, doing meth, running. I didn't make it easy. The first foster home I was in, it was, that's the first time I had been abused. The foster lady, she, um, I wrote in the book where she came in the room and she started assaulting me. She like pushing my head. I had a carpet burn on my face. A lot of the times where I would go to talk to people about the problems that I was experiencing in foster care, it didn't help. You know, they would take the information and tell the foster parents who would in turn deal with me even more harshly. I think not being able to safely speak about my fears and my worries and my concerns, I think that that made me very secretive at a very young age because I feel like I didn't have any safety and, and my concerns only angered others. Very few did I ever walk in and feel like I can call this home. I can go to the kitchen and get a sandwich if I need it. I felt like I was abandoned by my mother, my father, my family. And so growing up in the foster home where this lady didn't like nurture me in that way, I started like hating myself. And so I, I had like suicidal thoughts. When you have those type of feelings for yourself, I can't show love to someone else. My freshman year, I did nine schools. Took about a month each time for anybody to even enroll me in school. And when you get put in foster care, you can't concentrate on school. Like, that's the farthest thing that you're really worried about. I mean, I don't really like to blame our problems on the system because, I mean, we're, we're responsible for what happens with us. I feel like the system could have at least prepared me to be 18 and by myself way better than they did. Do I blame foster care for where I am? I, I would say partially they're responsible. I think had I been put with the right home, I don't think I would have ended up in this place. The state absolutely dropped the ball with me. They didn't teach me life skills. They didn't teach me socialization. They didn't teach me stability. It steals their childhood. It steals their joy. It steals anything, momentum that they c or potential that we could have. You grow up so fast. You grow up with this trauma and it, it makes you bitter. It makes you angry. We need to look at this. This is a society issue. This isn't a family issue. This is a society issue at large. I think that children who are going through a traumatic experience, they need at least one deep emotional attachment with an adult who, who gives them the message that they are loved, valued, and accepted unequivocally. I firmly believe 
that before we can do criminal justice reform, we need to do foster care reform.